In this podcast, we're going to be thinking about arteries and veins and the differences between arteries and veins. Now, the arteries describe a network of tubes going throughout the body. And they are all taking blood from the heart away from the heart. So that is the definition of an artery. An artery or an arterial vessel is any vessel which is carrying blood away from the heart. And likewise, the veins are a complex system of tubes. And again, just like the arteries, the veins are carrying blood. But the veins carry blood towards the heart. So the veins are a complicated network of tubes carrying blood from the periphery of the body or sometimes from the lungs back to the heart. So it's very simple. Arteries carry blood away from the heart. Veins carry blood towards the heart. Let's think about the structure of arteries and veins in a little more detail now and see how this structure is related to the function that they perform in the body. Now, there are quite a lot of similarities between the structures of arteries and veins. So if we take a cross section of an artery and a cross section of a vein, we notice similarities. And one of the obvious similarities is that there are three main coats in the wall of arteries and veins. And these coats are called the tunics or the tunica. A tunic is a word for a coat. So we have three main layers. We have the tunica intima or the tunica interna, that is the inside layer. Then we have the tunica media, that is the middle layer. And then we have the tunica externa, or sometimes called the tunica adventitia, which is the external layer. But always in the middle, the hole down the middle is called the lumen. And of course, the lumen is the key point of an artery or a vein because the blood flows through the lumen in the middle of these tube-like vessels. Now, in the larger arteries especially, there's some additional layers because there's two layers of elastic lamina. So larger arteries in particular have an extra elastic lamina around about the outside of the tunica media and an extra layer of elastic lamina around the inside of the tunica media. These layers are often referred to as the internal and the external elastic lamina. And these are most prominent in the large arteries because the large arteries need to be more elastic. Now the tunica intima or the tunica interna in both arteries and veins has a layer of vascular endothelium. So the blood going through the lumen of a blood vessel is actually in contact with these vascular endothelial cells. And this is a layer of squamous cells, each with its own separate nucleus, cytoplasm and cell membrane on a basement membrane. And the basement membrane itself is made up largely of collagen fibers. And this is very important to guide the process of healing. If there's an intact basement membrane, healing can often occur quite effectively. Now, the elastic lamina, as the name would suggest, are largely made up of elastic fibres. And there's actually holes in the elastic lamina to allow diffusion from the intima through to the media. And these give elasticity to the arteries. The veins don't have elastic lamina. So that's an important difference between arteries and veins. The arteries do have an elastic lamina, whereas the veins do not. Now, going from the lumen outwards, the next layer is going to be the tunica media or the middle layer. And this is rich in elastic fibres and smooth muscle fibres as well. And it's important that there are smooth muscle fibres in the walls of arteries and veins because these can allow for vasoconstriction and vasodilation. And this effect is most commonly associated with the arterial system, where the arteries can dilate, making the lumen wider, or where the medial wall of the artery can constrict, making the artery more narrow, reducing the cross-section of the lumen. The external around the outside is made up of elastic and collagen fibres, and this is important to anchor the vein or the artery to the adjacent tissues because we don't want them moving around and we don't want them getting kinked. And the tunica externa or the tunica adventitia, it's just two names for the same thing. Especially in the larger arteries, there's going to be nerves and small blood vessels in the wall because the wall of the artery itself in the larger vessels needs a blood supply.
Now the large arteries, such as the aorta or the carotid arteries going up to the brain, have a well differentiated elastic lamina. And what happens here is when the left ventricle contracts, the blood is going to be ejected into these large arteries. That's going to increase the pressure in these large arteries and as a result the walls are going to expand out the way to accommodate the increased volume of blood which has just been ejected from the ventricle. But then the ventricle is going to relax and during that time we want the arterial blood flow to continue. So during that time the elastic arterial walls, especially in these large arteries, will constrict down again, reducing the lumen, increasing the pressure of the blood in those arterial systems. Now the blood can't go back to the heart because the aortic valve will stop it. So the blood is going to be propelled on into the medium sized arteries. So this elastic property of the large arteries has the effect of smoothing out the blood flow between systole and diastole. So what's actually happening is in the large arteries, the elastic lamina causing the arteries to constrict back down again, to close back down again under elastic recoil, are propelling the blood forward. They are propelling arteries. And for this reason, they're often called the conducting arteries. And this is going to conduct the blood into the smaller arteries, into the medium-sized arteries. And these have a more muscular wall. The walls are more muscular and less elastic. And these are often called the distributing arteries because these arteries distribute the blood to the organs and tissues of the body. Now in veins, as we've mentioned, the lumen, the tunica intima, the tunica media, and the tunica externa are both going to be represented and clearly histologically visible. But the veins don't have the elastic lamina, and also because the veins are carrying blood at lower pressure, they have thinner walls. So the arterial walls are relatively thick compared to the lumen, whereas the venous walls are thinner compared to the lumen. And indeed, the shape of a vein can vary depending on the pressure of the blood that's in it at the time. So, for example, if you hold your hand down the way, you might see the veins in the back of your hand fill up with blood as they become dilated, as the blood accumulates in the veins. But then if you move your hand up, and again you watch the veins in the back of your hand, you'll probably see that they disappear. And this is because the veins are emptying. The veins are collapsing shut as the blood returns from the peripheral veins to the central veins. And this is important because the venous system in general is an important reservoir for blood. Quite a lot of the blood in the circulatory system is going to be found in the venous system at any one point in time. And there are further differences between arteries and veins. Arteries do not have valves, whereas veins do have valves. Especially the veins in the arms and the legs have got important valves. And these valves will allow the blood to flow from the periphery towards the centre of the body, but then will prevent regurgitation of the blood back from the centre of the body towards the periphery. Valves, as always, are a structure which ensures one-way flow. And this ensures that the blood carries on flowing from the periphery to the centre in the veins, because after all, a vein is a structure which will carry blood back to the heart. So arteries, no valves, veins, valves. The arteries don't need valves because the blood is propelled under the influence of the myocardial contraction of the heart down a pressure wave around the arterial system. Now, in essence, there are two circulatory systems in the body. The left side of the heart is pumping blood to the body, to the systemic circulation. Whereas the right ventricle, the right side of the heart, this is the lung pump. It is pumping blood to the lungs around about the pulmonary circulation. So we're going to have systemic arteries carrying blood to the body tissues, systemic veins carrying blood back from the body tissues. We're going to have pulmonary arteries carrying blood to the lungs, and we're going to have pulmonary veins carrying blood back from the lungs. And if we think about systemic arteries, when systemic arteries are cut, the blood that comes out is bright red. 
And the reason this blood is bright red is that the blood is highly saturated with oxygen, therefore contains a lot of the bright red pigment, oxyhemoglobin. And if you check your own peripheral oxygen saturation levels, you'll probably find that they're 95 to 100% saturated with oxygen. And then as this blood circulates through the tissues of the body, it's going to give up oxygen to the tissues of the body. And the blood is going to become deoxygenated. The haemoglobin will become reduced, carrying less oxygen. And this means there's a greater proportion of deoxyhemoglobin in venous blood. And deoxyhemoglobin is dark red in colour. So it's still the same haemoglobin molecule, but when it contains a lot of oxygen, it turns bright red. When it contains less oxygen, it goes dark red. And there is less oxygen associated with the haemoglobin in veins because the oxygen has been given up to the tissues. But in health, venous blood still contains quite a lot of oxygen. So if you take the level of oxygen in your central veins at the moment, it's probably around about 70 to 80% saturated. And what this means is your peripheral tissues have only absorbed 20 to 30% of the oxygen which was passing through them. And this is quite normal. So when the blood is going back to the right side of the heart, prior to going to the lungs, it's still typically 70 to 80% saturated with oxygen. And when it goes to the lungs in the pulmonary circulation, that just tops the oxygen up. Now, another difference between arteries and veins is the pressure of the blood contained in these types of vessels. Now, in a systemic artery, when the heart is contracting, we might expect the pressure to go up to 120 millimetres of mercury. And then when the heart is relaxing during diastole, we might expect the pressure to go down to about 80 millimetres of mercury. So a normal blood pressure might be 120 over 80 millimetres of mercury in a systemic artery. Now, in the pulmonary arteries, the situation is very different. The pulmonary artery is going to arise from the right ventricle. That's going to pump blood up into the common trunk of the pulmonary artery. That will quickly divide into the right and the left pulmonary artery, going to the respective lungs. And if you think about it, the heart and the lungs are both in the thoracic cavity. So there's not a long distance for the blood to travel. Now, when your left ventricle is contracting, the blood's got to go everywhere from your toes to your brain to your ears to your fingertips. It has to go all around the body. But with the right ventricular contraction, the blood only has to go through the pulmonary arterial system to the lungs, and that's not so far. And for this reason, the pressures generated by the right ventricle are significantly lower than the pressures generated by the left ventricle. So typically in your pulmonary arteries at the moment, the pressure might be about 25 over 12 millimetres of mercury. 25 when the right ventricle is contracting, maybe 12 millimetres of mercury when the right ventricle is relaxing. Now the pressure in veins is always going to be lower, but the pressure in veins is going to vary. So as we mentioned, when your hand is in the down position and the veins fill up with blood, the pressure in the veins is going to rise. When you hold your arm up in the air and the veins empty, the pressure in those veins is essentially going to go to zero. But in the central veins of the body, like the vena cava, what we call the central venous pressure, we would expect this to be about two to six millimetres of mercury. So in your central veins at the moment, in your vena cava, just before that blood is going to drain back into the right atrium, the pressure might be between two and six millimetres of mercury. So as we can see, the pressure in veins is going to be significantly lower than the pressure in arteries. And this has many important clinical implications. And an obvious one is as a result of an injury of the tissues are cut. So if you cut through an artery, the blood will come out in spurts. You'll get spurts of bright red blood. Whereas if you cut a vein, because the pressure is lower, the blood will tend to ooze into the wound and the blood will be darker red in colour. Now, having said that, if you cut an artery, you will get a reflex vasoconstriction of the artery and the pulsation will reduce very quickly, even just after one or two spurts of blood because of the arterial reflex vasoconstriction. 
And this is very important because it will reduce the amount of blood loss by hemorrhage. And sometimes when you look in a wound, you can see areas of bright red blood and areas of dark red blood corresponding to areas of arterial bleeding and areas of venous bleeding. But of course, if significant sized veins are cut, large amounts of blood can ooze out, still causing life-threatening hemorrhage. So it's not really that one is more serious than the other, but they have these different characteristics. Bright red spurting as opposed to dark red oozing of blood. And if you're ever in a situation where you're examining a blood vessel and you're not sure whether it's an artery or a vein, it's very simple. There's a sure and trusted way to tell the difference between an artery and a vein. And I'm sure you can think of this straight away. When you palpate the vessel with your fingers, the artery will pulsate, whereas in the vein, there is no pulsation. And clinically, again, this is massively useful because it means we can palpate arteries to take the patient's pulse in different parts of the body. So you probably already learned to palpate the radial artery, the carotid artery, the femoral artery and the brachial artery. These are arteries we use all the time in clinical practice to assess the pulse. We are feeling the pulses of blood as they flow through the arterial system. But in the veins, we don't have a similar source of heart originating pulsation. The venous return to the heart is conducted via different mechanisms. So that was just a short podcast on arteries and veins, starting to think about the differences between arteries and veins and some of the clinical significance of us possessing this important knowledge.